Did you know that if you reduce your chicken mortality and make sure that you have got the least number of deaths, you stand a chance to make the highest profit in chicken farming? And this is the journey of how to reduce those mortalities from zero to zero and increase the money in your pocket from shilling to shilling. Watch this video detailed by detailed. You will know everything of what it takes to do brooding. You look at this structure, it's very cheap, very affordable to any farmer and I myself will convert this structure into a modern brooder that will have zero mortalities and I'll do it until I introduce the chicks here. Keep it farming with AIM Agriculture. Greetings to you all. If you are new to our YouTube channel, kindly hit the subscribe button, like and share. Remember to follow us on our Facebook page. All questions, just do them on Facebook. I'll respond as fast as I can. Today, we are going to do it very practically. Everything here is going to be very practically. And I am going to take you through and you see it. And as you know, you always have to make farming to be very interesting and very easy, cheap and affordable. Always do chicken farming according to your means live within your means. I am here in Isiolo. This is my friend, very long time friend we've been talking. We met actually online, we've not met physically, but we've just been talking. So I have had to deliver to him chicks, about 650 in number. And when I arrived, I was shocked that this is a brooder. I was to just bring the chicks and put them here. Guys, I couldn't afford to just dump the chicks there and leave. That's not what I, what I do. I am chicken and chicken is part of me. I have to make sure that he raises the 600 chicken from chicks till maturity. And therefore, I have to make this chicken structure be a brooder. Let's have a look of how it's looking and then we make it together until it becomes a very suitable brooder. So if you look at it here, uh, this window sill is so huge and it's so open. Too much wind going in, too much dust. Guys, this is the inside. You can see, we already even have chicken here. This is the floor. The floor is nicely done, yes, but uh, you see, it's already having droppings. We have droppings, and these ones could be, I, I have no history of the chicken that dropped these ones here. Maybe we could be having some Newcastle disease with them. Maybe they have already affected this place. And so I can't put the chicks here just as this structure is. I have to convert it into a real brooder. And I'm going to use very cheap and easily available resources at my disposal. Actually, I'm going to reuse everything. And in the next 30 minutes or two hours, this will be a complete brooder and I'm going to bring in chicken. The first thing I have to do is cleaning. Wow. I've already finished the sweeping, the floor is now clean, there is no single chicken poop. Therefore, I have to remove all this dust and the cobwebs, remove the foreign materials, like these feeders that were used by the previous flocks, and then I go to the next step. Sweeping is done. Removal of cobwebs is done. The foreign uh, previously material that was being used by the previous birds is done. Next step. 
already done the dusting. Now I have to do some cleanup outside here. You can see there's some waste iron sheets there. The next thing now is to do there's these structures to be fumigation destroyed here. Actually, not fumigation. So I have to do some work. I'm going to do here. cleaning because uh, we have these open spaces, so it won't be able to fumigate well. Now the tricky part is I want to bring chicken here in the next one hour, and so I have to really check on the withdrawal period of the disinfectant that I'm going to use. I don't have to use an incub any uh, disinfectant that has got seven days withdrawal period, 10 days withdrawal period, no. And that is very easy. So I have to use a detergent. This is just the normal detergent that we use for washing clothes and uh, we use for cleaning the houses. So you know, if you can wash it, you can use this detergent for washing a cloth and then the next two hours it's dry and you're wearing it. It means it has got a very minimal withdrawal period. When it's dry, it's done. So first, I'll have to make, have to mix it with water and then I have to do a bit of sprinkling in this flow, on the flow of the structure. Remember, there are also crevices on the walls. So then it's very important they also get disinfected. Some unwanted material as such has to get out. It won't be so much necessary. So I'll get that out. So at this point now most like almost the entire structure has been dusted with the disinfectant. Therefore now the next step will be to wash and soak this structure. So let me get this out. This is the next part now. I have to soak this floor. Then I have to wash this uh, roof. So to pull it in like that. The entire structure is now washed. I've removed all the dust that was there using water. Then now I have to soak this floor a little bit so that this disinfectant can sink. So this is a very important session because now you're ensuring that the disinfectant sinks in every cracks, every crevices. And that's why this session now becomes very vital. Where I feel like there's a... I need to add, I can add some disinfectant like here. I feel it's not very sufficient. Wow, that's easy. So then, do that. Can continue the process.
place receives the disinfectant and every place is soaked. Corners are the biggest problems that we have. So make sure they are well done. If you look at such cracks, this is the place where we harbor diseases. Such big places where there are so many timbers joined together and such a place where you can see there is so much stool. And so there I have to mix a lot of disinfectant and wash out that. This is how we do it. So then add a strong one more time. That. I'll add that one more time. So once it's done like that, soak the places, soak the cracks where there's too much timber. Just ensure that the disinfectant gets to every point. Eh? Then you get here, again, create another strong one. So these are the points, wash them off, like that, like that. And so, we'll give this disinfectant time to soak in this flow. As it soaks, then now I have to make something, I have to make sure that I make a very concentrated uh, ratio of uh, the disinfectant to water and then now I spray on this upper side because chicken are not going to come in contact with this upper side but now pathogens can come in contact with these upper sides so I have to introduce a thin film of the disinfectant that will stay there for quite some time so that when the pathogens come they'll get the film there and this washing disinfectant is the best for that because it will dry on this surface then when Something like a housefly comes and then it uh, bring, introduces some moisture, then that disinfectant tends to burn it and then it moves off. So then this is how I will do it. You take the disinfectant and then mix a very strong disinfectant ratio. So I introduce that in the bucket and then I create very strong mix it so this is very strong then I use the hand spray my hand spray filled with the disinfectant then you take the lid and you cover like that mix it very well again so you can see it's coming out very well Then you can adjust the knob to get a pointed like that. So then I will spray like this to the surface. So you can see the white foam that is coming. So this pole, for example, will now be entirely washed with this disinfectant like that. So do it for the entire structure. Mm. 
So then now, after the flow, the flow has sucked enough water, I have to seep out this water. The house is now clean, well disinfected. You can see the floor, you can see the roof, you can see the walls. Now, we want to do the brooder. What are the requirements? One, you need old newspapers. These are the old newspapers. There. You need some nails, four inch, and the ceiling board nails. You need sawdust or wood shavings. That's it. Simple. You need uh, plywood. These are the plywoods. So we've already spread the bedding, it's now ready. So the next thing now is to do the ring brooder. So I have here my saw, the nails, and the plywood. And so what I do,
Great. Considering Bure is now set, we can put our chicken here. Oh, this is a nice start. Now we have to do the outside. You can see it's quite a lot of work, so we have to clean up here and set up again. So we have two sets of feeders. We have the baby feeders and the chick trays. So now we've just transferred the chicks into a new brooder and I'm continuing to keep transferring them. So I have to introduce the feeds. You can see I have the, the, the old newspapers well spread. The chicken, the chicken cannot eat the bedding. So then I have to introduce these trays just to train them in the first eating, like that. These are the plastic feeding trays. Like that. Wow. I have to train them a little bit by putting some feed on the floor. Like that. Just spreading the feed. Randomly. If I do spread the feed on the floor. I'll then now put put the feed on the trays like that. So you can see, like now they already started feeding from the floor, and once they do that, then they'll just come to feed from the tray, which will now be very easy for them. You can zoom in. Like those ones now are eating on the floor. So this one is now called uh, feed training. So they'll eat from the floor, and then gradually they'll start eating from the trough, just like that. By tomorrow, they introduce now the normal feeders.
Now mix our water with the vitamin and the antibiotic. Make sure that your drinkers are very clean, like these ones are here. So then, I will then now introduce the liquid paraffin. Note that I have not mixed this liquid paraffin with the water in the bucket, in the clean bucket. This is because once I mix the liquid paraffin and the vitamin and the antibiotic, once I turn this drinker like this, the liquid paraffin will float on water. The chicken will not drink that. And we'll have a challenge just like we had on Alex's farm. If you didn't watch Alex's video, I've shared a link. You can check that challenge he had of having the, the waste blocking the rare or the anal sphincter of the bird. It can't then defecate well. So then you just make a small hole on top of the liquid paraffin using a clean nail. So this will help you always in topping up the liquid paraffin in the brooder. So once it's like this, then now you sprinkle or you spill the liquid paraffin round, 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 like that. Just a little, eh? So then, I will do that for every drinker. So now that I've already set the drinker, the brooder, I can't enter with my feet, so I have to remove my shoes, enter with clean foot, like that. Then now it's time to introduce the water to the chicken. Make sure that you're very keen to not have spillages. Any spillage will result in the liquid paraffin spilling. So then I will put the water gently at the point. Good. The chicks are already drinking the water. That's amazing. So I'll ensure that the drinkers are at a flat surface like that. Wow. Guys, this is what it feels. Just introduce the water and the chicks are drinking. The response is so nice. This is amazing. So you can see some of the chicks are clustered to that corner. That means there's a problem. Stress is coming from this side to this side because mostly I'm operating from this other side. Okay, so I can introduce more water to the chicks. The response of these chicks is so amazing. Wow, they're drinking water and they're feeding. Our brood is complete. There are only two things remaining. I need to introduce light and when it's towards evening when it's very cold, I introduce the brooder, the, jig, the brooding jiko to provide heat for these birds. Everything is set, everything is done, the brooder is done and dusted. Wow, the job is done. And this is now what I'll be happy seeing my subscribers and my followers doing. The structure is well done. You remember it before? Now look, it's clean. We've, already, we've put these curtains here. 
to separate this brooder from the main other the main chicken house so we don't have any interference we also introduce this curtain here to seal off the outside from here we've got now no interference coming from outside like dust and wind and we put the curtain outside which you can see it's very interesting partitioned into two this is the brooder uh, aeration in the evening the curtain will be rolled up during the day like now it will be rolled down but we shall maintain this lower one for a period of two weeks now after two weeks we can be able to roll this one up roll this one down then we tie it in the middle using a rope i'll just demonstrate to you shortly come with me this is our curtain divided into two so you can roll it like this so this one now we use it for brooding when the chicks are still young in a period of a week so they'll be able to get their ventilation using this upper vent but after one week and they're two weeks old now we shall use both curtains so you'll be able to roll this one down up sorry to this point then now you roll them together like that and you tie using a rope here same there then same there so you have enough ventilation and maybe when you feel like there are some rains coming you can roll you can tie this one up using a rope up there and then you roll this one up to this point so now you have ventilation from down i really hope this one has motivated you you've learned something you can make your own brooder using the easiest and locally available materials and you can control your bird mortalities up to zero remember our target is zero mortality for zero losses and that means just increased profits if you haven't subscribed to our youtube channel kindly hit the subscribe button and let's meet in the a to z poultry masterclass i'm your host antonio cheers